from part one of the magic. And it is that it is not your perfection that gives you your power. It's your boldness to own your humanness. Your perfectly imperfect times you've fallen, but look how many times and look how magically and mysteriously and uniquely to you, you have gotten up. And no one, no circumstance can ever take that away from you. So I knew there had to be a way because by far the worst of all the negative emotions that I was feeling in that moment was feeling powerless to help my daughter. So I said, game on. I am going to play this inner game like no one has ever played this inner game. And so the first question, because I knew I had to ask different questions. The first question was, how much power was I willing to give this boulder? I mean, my daughter was just 22 years old, but she'd been to five out of the seven continents. She'd done all those amazing things. She really had already changed lives. She had done more in her 22 years than most people do in 80. So was I, her mother, going to allow this boulder to rip all of that away from us and force me to go forward for the rest of my life finding myself as the mother of a child who had been tragically killed at an early age by a boulder? Was that her legacy? Or was I going to not only take my power back, but take the power that she had sown? Thought it was about love and light and laughter, and especially if she did not survive to bear her legacy further, if she should be on the power of anyone to do it, it should be able to be her mom. So I made the decision in that moment that no, I was going to define myself going forward as a mother of a child who had just 22 years and made a powerful impact on this planet. And I would do my darndest to live up to that, regardless of what happened. So, as I zoomed through that night sky, I started asking myself even better questions. 